Well, folks, good afternoon. My name is Dan Sullivan. I happen to be the RVP of uh, the Eastern Region for Conducive Technology and excited to be part of this webinar this afternoon where hopefully we, myself and GQ can demonstrate to you what our patented IO reduction software can do to help 2x or more your SQL environment. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, the fellow by the name of GQ will be joining me today. His name is Gary Kwan. He's our Senior VP of Technology Strategy. And folks, we've spared no expense to bring GQ along with us today. GQ, you out there? I am, Dan, and thank you for the intro. And don't let Dan fool you. He's very technical, and I'm just here for the deep dive stuff. But I do want to say, Dan, one thing, we do like to make this uh, session very interactive. And you'll see a Q&A box over on the right-hand side. And if you have any questions during the session or at the end, please put them in there and address it to all uh, presenters, and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Thank you, GQ. And as you see, folks, already, GQ is keeping me honest here as the sales guy, so I love it. So thanks for that, GQ. And, and also, folks, for attending today. You'll be receiving not only a copy of the presentation, but also a not for resale NFR copy of a server license of Velocity. That's a $525 uh, value that you'll be receiving uh, just for sitting sitting through the next few minutes of our discussion here, which I hope you'll you'll take advantage of, and we'll talk about that later on in the presentation. So again, thanks all for attending wanted to briefly just share with you a little bit about Conducive and who we are. You may know of us from a previous life, and that, that is as of the DiskKeeper Corporation. So we've actually been in business for 38 years. DiskKeeper was the world's preeminent disk defragmentation software product, sold over 100 million licenses. Um, but in, we rebranded the company in 2012 because the world changed. Virtualization came on the scene. No longer did you uh, defrag a SAN or an SSD. So GQ and his engineering team understood that and totally respun um, our software to where now it is two light filter drivers that sit in the Windows OS. We'll talk about what it is they do, but on average they eliminate about 30% of the I.O. Uh, to your backend storage subsystem. And what that means and what our customers are seeing is because of that, on SQL and other I.O. intensive Microsoft applications, Windows-based applications, they're getting anywhere from 50 to 300 percent or more application performance improvement on their existing hardware, even all flash. So we're going to talk about how, how our software does that today. Um, I mentioned two light filter drivers. One of them is a patented caching engine, very smart, very intelligent, uh, and because it's so different, uh, folks like HP, Lenovo, Western Digital, actually nine out of the ten top OEMs uh, OEM that from us and put it into their workbooks and laptops. It's actually better than, than what they have themselves delivered, so that's pretty impressive when you look at some of the names there, uh, and again, thanks to GQ and his team. Because of what we deliver in for SQL and virtualized environments, et cetera. Gartner named us a cool vendor, and they should be, and said we should be installed in every virtualized initiative. Uh, because of what we do for Microsoft environments, we're a close partner with Microsoft. Because of what we do in virtualization, we're a close partner with, with VMware. And very, very specific to, to our discussion today, we just recently certified under the new Microsoft SQL Server I.O. Reliability Certification. It was GQ and his team that did that. GQ, you want to talk a little bit about that, please? Sure, Dan. I consider this a nice accolade just because you know, Microsoft has these certain certifications to make sure that other applications, third-party products like ourselves, are completely compatible with their products, and in this case, SQL Server. Not only did we have to go through some stringent testing, we had to go against a board of Microsoft SQL experts to, in order to get the certification. Now, one thing I do want to mention, we're the 
first and only software vendor to get this certification. But we're in good company with people like EMC, Dell, and HP who also have this certification. So a nice accolade, Dan. It sure is, GQ, and congratulations to you and your team for, for achieving that recognition. So thanks for that. So folks, that's really what I'm, all I'm going to spend on, on our company here today. Let's just talk about what's important, and that's SQL Server performance, what folks are saying, and how we improve it. We do a lot of surveying uh, across the IT industry, We've done it for years. Um, and this is the most recent results of the latest survey that we had done. And over at least 28% of those surveyed, and we survey over 1,000 IT professionals, say that they're having issues with their SQL performance. So, you know, a pretty, pretty substantial number say they'd love to see a better improvement. And if we take all of the responses back and we build a word map that you can see here, obviously what stands out is the largest and most often mentioned uh, problematic application on these surveys, SQL. And seven of our 10 new customers, so new business customers, start off by buying our software to improve their SQL performance. So pretty impressive. Well, what happens to I.O. and I.O. especially in a, both a virtualized and a SQL environment? Well, what you're seeing here is the, the most efficient I.O. possible, and that is large contiguous writes emanating out of the Windows OS, hitting the hypervisor, moving down to storage, and back again. And in a virtualized environment, it's going through the hypervisor, but it also could be a physical environment, which a lot of our SQL customers still are. Um, for a lot of different reasons. But as soon as you virtualize, these two inefficiencies enter into the picture, the Windows I.O. tax and the I.O. blender effect. And what that means is that these nice, large, contiguous writes are broken up by the Windows I.O. tax into these small, random fragments across multiple VMs on that host. And those small random fragments hit the hypervisor and get what Gartner and also we worked with Gartner to define this problem called the I.O. blender effect, which by definition degrades storage performance and increases latency. So even if you have all flash down at the storage level, it's having to deal with all of this small random unnecessary I.O. By the way, flash doesn't like random I.O. versus if your environment looked like this. And that's what we do, both for SQL environments and for virtualized environments across the Windows platform. GQ, any uh, comments here on what goes on? Well, I'll give a little technical background on this, Dan. And first of all, you know, all those random I.O.s versus a sequential I.O., it's just a lot of overhead because there's more I.O.s to process. But also, you're not taking advantage of your storage. Whenever you buy storage, they give you two benchmarks, sequential I.O. and random I.O. And you'll notice that if that the sequential I.O. always outperform the random I.O. So if you can enforce sequential I.O. to occur, you're getting the best out of your uh, storage. But, you know, let me go back to why this occurs. This Windows I.O. tax, this occurs on the Windows file system, which is on the VMs. At that logical level, when a file gets created or extended, the file system doesn't know how big it's going to be. So what it does is it just gets the next allocation. And this is all on the logical side of the Windows file system. And if that data, that creation or extension doesn't fit that allocation, then it has to find another allocation and so forth and so forth. Well, each of those allocations is an extra I.O. And then you have all those random I.O.s going to the hypervisor. And of course, then you have to start handling them from one to the other, one to the other. And you get that I.O. blender effect. So this causes a lot of extra overhead. And later on, we'll show you how we solve this. Thanks, Dan. 
So thank you, GQ. And, and folks, if you think about it here, if you went to write a gigabyte of data in this environment, and this is true of all virtualized environments, nobody's, nobody's special here. It may take over, <clears throat> excuse me, 100,000 IOs to write a gigabyte of data. With our software and our optimization, it might take 50 or 60,000 IOs. So you can appreciate what that difference might mean to speed, performance, and in your environment. Another way to think about it, and I'm sure you all live in a variety of different areas, but take your, take your uh, interstate at rush hour, right? Probably pretty slow, if not stopped at all. What we do is we take half the cars off the highway at rush hour, we pack the remaining cars full of people, and we put those cars that are left in an HOV lane that really works. And you'll see the results of that a little bit later here in the presentation. So what do we do for SQL? Again, large contiguous writes, more payload with every IO operation, the patented DRAM caching engine that GQ is going to talk about in a minute. It doesn't capture the blobs of data. It's, it, it learns and it's smart and it knows what read IOs are performance degrading. And that's what it puts into idle DRAM. And folks, this is all automated. There is nothing for you to do. And that idle DRAM is 10 to 15 times faster than flash. So if we can maximize the use of idle DRAM, just sitting there on the side of the road, and we're going to pick it up and use it, we really improve SQL performance. GQ and his team have developed a benefits dashboard because our software is really set it and forget it. I mentioned everything's automated. Once you install it, and oh, by the way, there's now no reboot required to install. You can install the software in minutes. It starts optimizing immediately. But people say, well, this is great. You know, I see performance improving, but what, what's it doing for me? And so again, GQ and his team have developed this dashboard and we'll show it to you. And in addition, you know, we just guarantee that our software will improve performance or no harm, no foul, you'll get your money back. So GQ, I've talked about these two patented filter drivers. You want to give them a little, little overview of, uh, of both of them, IntelliWrite here and then IntelliMemory? Sure, Dan, be glad to. And, you know, I indicated how the Windows file system tends to break apart when writing data out because it doesn't know how big that uh, file creation or extension is going to be. So we have our IntelliWrite technology, and what we're doing is very simple. Is in the background, we're monitoring your system to see when certain applications or certain file types, when they get created or extended, how big they're going to be. So when that comes to the file system, we actually feed this intelligence back to the Windows file system so we can look for the best application to write that data out. So now it can do a single I.O. to do it rather than many I.O.s. Now what this does is basically, and another analogy is, if you want to carry a gallon of water from one place to another, do you do it with 100 small Dixie cups or do you do it with one big gallon bucket and get it done all at one time? And that's what we're enforcing the file system to do, to be smarter. Now, this not only improves that performance of that one system, but now you increased the bandwidth of that network and also the network storage because now it's available for other systems to use that network and storage system. Thanks, Dan. Well, that's great, GQ. And, you know, while you're on such a roll, how about taking us through IntelliMemory? I will do that. And, you know, Dan indicated that nine out of the top ten OEM PC manufacturers use our technology, but you hadn't heard of us because they use it under their name. And the reason for it is that we're unique on how we do the caching. It's not as though as some, you know, you just, some data was read in and you decide, let me put that in cache and hope it gets read in again. We're very intelligent on what we do. And that is, we're monitoring the background, what data is getting hit the most. And that's one factor. The other factor is, 
look at the type of data and how much performance gains that they'll give you back. What we found out is that the, it's the little busy IOs that cause more disruption and more performance degradation. So if we take those and also the ones that get hit the most, put those at a high priority and put in cash, you're going to get the best hit rate and best performance gains. Now there's a second thing that's unique about us, and that is how we allocate memory for caching. You don't have to go and set aside memory. What IntelliMemory does is just uses the available unused memory. And we'll take that and use that for caching. Now, if any system or user process comes in and needs that memory, we automatically give it up. So there is no memory contention issues at all. So same thing here as I said before. By doing this, we're we're only we're increasing the performance of IOs because we're satisfying right there. And we're getting rid of all that network and that storage traffic. So that not only increases the performance there, but also frees up that network and storage bandwidth for others to use. Thanks, Dan. So that's awesome, GQ. Thanks so much for, for taking us through. And folks, it, it is just incredible the results that you can see, especially in with available DRAM, 10 to 15 times faster than flash, and a read-intensive environment like SQL. So let me just give you a few examples. There are a lot here. But lower left there, Bell Mobility, that's the Verizon of Canada. Look at that. Velocity reduced their I.O. to SAN by 61%. And what happened? 3x faster SQL queries. ASL marketing in the middle. Look at that. Batch imports dropped from 27 hours to 12, a 15-hour reduction. And top right, creative office, response times for SQL, et cetera, 90% faster. I don't know, folks, if, if I didn't have these specific example, customer examples, and I was telling you things like that, I'm not sure you'd believe me. And we've got more, and I won't read all of these. I'm just going to take the top one here, a customer of mine, the good old University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana, 50,000 students. We're in their facilities and services group. They used us uh, as DiskKeeper Corporation, but they virtualized, as most people have. Uh, they also just recently brought in all brand new hardware, Dell 730 servers, 768 gigabytes of RAM, and an all flash compel it back end. So they were pretty happy about what their environment, the performance improvements, et cetera. But since they already owned our software, it's a perpetual license, they said, hey, we'll try Velocity on this new environment. So before installing Velocity, a specific database took uh, uh, four and a half hours to process about one and a, one and a half uh, terabytes of data. And that took 13.9 million IOs. After that, that four hours dropped to one and a half hours. And the, the IO that got processed dropped from 13.9 million to 2.7. They couldn't believe it. Uh, and also, it's really the key here is DRAM caching that took a lot of this IO out of their, I say out of their environment, put it in a DRAM didn't take the ugly trip down to their new flash storage and back again, and gave us those incredible performance improvements. So really, really something, and I'm sure you probably read the other ones here, but they're all on our website, uh, and you'll also be getting a copy of this presentation afterwards. So I mentioned the, the dashboard that GQ and his team put together. GQ, you want to walk us through this? Sure, Dan, because a lot of you know users put this on there, and they said, what is this thing doing for me? Well, you know, I indicated how IntelliWrite and in, IntelliMemory will eliminate a lot of those IOs from going to storage. So we're actually showing you how many reads and writes we're actually eliminating and the total IOs. Not only that, we're also indicating the IO time saved because in our product, since we're a 
storage filter driver, we know what the latency is for those IOs to complete. And by preventing that, we know we can show you the actual IO time saved. Now, just in this example here, it's just an example, and this was just for our last three weeks. But you can show since install, the last year, the last month with our product here. And then it also shows you uh, some optimization data of fragments prevented and free space is consolidated. Free space consolidated is important too because you want to have the space to do those nice contiguous writes. And Dan, thank you for the next one. There's one other dashboard here that we'd like to show. And it gives you the actual performance metrics that are occurring on your system. You know, uh, IOPS, megabytes per second, the latency, and also the read-write percentages uh, on your system. And then also the total amount of workload that we have processed while being running on that system there, all the reads and writes that we have helped optimize. Then lastly is the memory usage. And for example, on this system here, there's a total, mem uh, total memory of about eight gigabytes. And of those eight gigabytes, you know, right then there is about a little, oh, about seven free. And of those seven free, we're using about four, four and a half gigabytes for caching. But as I said, when, if, when or if a user or system process needs it, we will automatically give it back to them to use. They're already they're always the higher priority. So thanks, Dan. That's great, GQ. Thanks for walking us through the dashboards that you and your team put together. Well, folks, I also added I was just recently in our nation's capital and, and visiting some of our customers. I wanted to share with you an actual another customer result of a very large government agency on just one of their SQL instances here. So this dashboard is showing from December of 2016, which is when they had in installed this here. But look at these numbers, folks. We've eliminated 5.4 billion IOs. And by the way, this happens to be on a Nutanix hyperconverged environment. And you know, you might question, well, what's Velocity going to do and DiskKeeper going to do in that kind of an environment? Well, here it is. Of those, 3.5 billion are read IOs never took the trip to storage and back again, even on that hyperconverged environment, and almost 2 billion write IOs. But by doing all of that uh, optimization and elimination, we saved 4,168 days of IO processing time. Now, you could say, well, they're not, that's, there are more days there than there are since December 2016, and you're absolutely right. But there are multiple I.O. streams going on simultaneously. Just as with us here on this webinar, while it may only last for 30 minutes, we're, if I take all of the people's time here, we're actually here on like 20 hours of people time in this half hour. Same idea here with storage I.O. time save. The real story, incredible benefits. And if I look at the next dashboard that as GQ showed before, you can see here it's like 60-40 read-write percentages, but they processed a petabyte of data over the time period since December 2016. And again, 160 gigabytes of memory, 37 free, and we're using 23 of the 37 to process 77 terabytes of data from this cache. So I just had to show this to you just to give you another example of what many of our customers are seeing. And again, this is a SQL environment, SQL instance, um, and you know, it's just, and they just couldn't be happier on a hyper-converged environment. So how do I get 2X faster SQL performance? Well, clearly I think you've seen that the DRAM and available DRAM is the key, 10 to 15 times faster than flash, GQ's patented intelligent caching engine is going to learn your application and it's going to put those performance robbing read IOs into DRAM so they can be processed out of DRAM, not taking the trip to storage and back again. So 
best results, four gig plus of DRAM. And it depends how big your SQL database would be. And again, this is not only SQL, but this is all Windows environments, virtualized environments, et cetera. And one of the best practices also is to cap SQL's max memory and cap it appropriately, leaving available DRAM for us to use. And then just go look at the dashboards. And if we're, you'll, you'll see how much available memory is, there is and how much we're using. And if we're not getting 30 to 50% offload of I.O. to your underlying storage, try a little more memory. GQ, comments here? Sorry, Dan. Uh, the only thing I do want to mention is the importance of limiting the SQL to allow us to use some memory. Now, most of you think, are probably saying, well, doesn't SQL do its own caching? It does, but it's not very smart or efficient. What it will do is, and most of you know this, is it just tries to take all its databases uh, when it gets started and just loads them into all the memory leaving none for anybody else to use. Now, a lot of those databases or parts of those databases aren't even getting access, so it's very inefficient. So limiting the amount of SQL and, you know, our SEs or sales reps can point you to the uh, knowledge base articles on how to do that. It's very simple. And uh, limiting that and leaving some of that memory for us to use, you'll see great performance gains. If I recall, Dan, there was one outside lab that did some testing, and when they limited, they saw a increase of about 60 or 62 percent in transaction rates, and that's just because we're smarter on what to cash. Yep. So that's great. Well, thank you, GQ. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, folks, you know, what are the next steps? Well, I mentioned at the beginning you're going to be getting a free NFR from us to install in your environment. Uh, again, no reboot required. The longest time it'll take you to install is to download the software. So install it. You know, give the uh, give the algorithms uh, you know at least a day to kind of learn your environment. You'll see it'll start picking up after a few minutes uh, around eliminating IOs, etc. But again, it'll take a while to learn your environment. Now, as GQ mentioned earlier on, uh, while we're, set, we're sending a free NFR of a per server, per VM license, the best practice also is to optimize all of the VMs on a given host. Because if you optimize one VM, but all the others are still creating all of those small, random, noisy fragments, it's going to take away from the optimization you're doing on that one VM. So we're also happy to work with you to, and give you a, give you a what we call a host license to cover all those VMs on that host, so you can get the full benefit across all of the VMs on that host and or whatever else, however else you'd like to do it. We also have a velocity management console for to manage multiple VMs, install on multiple servers, et cetera, which makes it really pretty easy for you to do. So, folks, that's really the next step here is to get you to install and, and start seeing the benefits of our software. GQ, I know we asked for some Q&A and some questions at the beginning. I'm hoping we've got a few we can talk about here. We do, Dan. And uh, let me go through, start going through some of these. Uh, one person was asking, uh, will this also help? my performance on non-SQL file servers? And the answer is absolutely. Now, we talk about SQL here, you know, and that, the reason we talk about SQLs is that it's, um, it's very I.O. intensive, so it's a sweet spot for us. But any file server or any, actually any system that is very I.O. intensive, we can provide them performance gains on it. Yep. And then uh, Dane asks, so do you install this on the VM SQL server or the Hyper-V server? And good, good question here. Actually, we get installed on the client machines, on the SQL server itself, not the hypervisor. 
And we're actually just telling you we're agnostic to the hypervisor, whether it's Hyper-V, EXXI, uh, doesn't matter. As long as the virtual machines are running Windows, we can be installed on it. So you just installed on the SQL Server itself. And the reason why is that is where the IOs are getting, are originating. And if we can optimize it there and get your performance gains, that's where we want to do it. For instance, caching. As soon as that application uh, issues it and we can cache right there, we'll get the best performance gains for you. Now, uh, this next question from Austin also goes with another question about, does it also work about on physical systems? Because he, Austin asks, does this work on SQL bare metal servers? Because you talk a, a lot about running on VMs. And you're right, Austin. We, we do talk a lot about uh, the virtual environment here. But the same thing occurs on physical systems. Uh, for instance, that IO attacks. Uh, that happens, same thing on physical systems running Windows. And that IO blender effect, if you, here, here's a case in point. You have several physical machines all accessing LUNs on the same SAN. Well, they're all going to have that same blender effect going down that SAN. So Velocity does run on both physical and virtual systems. We also have another product called DiskKeeper that is uh, specifically for physical systems itself. But either one will run on the uh, physical systems too. Now, uh, let's see, the next question is, is it required to install on a on all the virtual clients or all the physical machines or virtual clients of the host? And no, it isn't. You can just install it on one of them. But as Dan indicated, it's it's recommended that you installed on all of them on the host. And the reason why is that although you improve the performance on one of the client machines, you want to do it on all of them so you clear up that bandwidth going to that same host. But you don't have to. And then, oh, there's a question on the safety of caching here. And I do want to indicate that our cache is a read-only cache. And what that means is that the data in our cache is already on your storage. So if the systems uh, get shut down, let's say a power outage, no problem because that data is already on your storage. I see Austin had a follow-up. says, does it matter if the lens are connected via iSCSI or uh, fiber channel? No, it doesn't. We're agnostic to it. We're actually providing the performance on the Windows side, which then goes down through those uh, the network to the storage. But we're agnostic to that, so no, no problem on that. And Dan, I have one for you here. All uh, right. They're asking about how is this uh, product licensed? Uh, great question. Great question. So there are two ways. Uh, one is per server. And again, you'll be getting a co an FR copy of a per server license. So again, uh, VM or physical server, single license. But I also mentioned earlier the uh, host-based license, and it, the name may be a little bit of a misnomer because you know we don't install on the host. We, as, Gary, as GQ said, we install on all the the guest VMs. But the host license covers all the VMs on that host. So whether it's per server or host, it's a one-time perpetual license cost, which, by the way, folks, is really, really inexpensive for what you get. And then there's just an annual maintenance after that, which covers typical support, SE, SE time, but also all the enhancements that GQ and his team continue to deliver uh, in this environment. And we have a pretty good plate full of, of roadmap items that they're working on today. So. GQ, I hope that uh, answered that question. That does. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I had another one about, I have all flash ar array storage. Will this still uh, give me performance gains? 
And yes, it will. In fact, some of the use cases that Dan indicated, those sites were using all flash arrays. And, you know, I indicated before about uh, how storage provides two benchmarks, uh, sequential and random IOs. And the same thing with hard disk drives. If you look at, this, at the all flash arrays, the sequential IOs always outperform the random IOs on SSDs, all flash arrays. So uh, you'll get the uh, performance gains on those too. Let me see. Uh, just one more, Dan. There, well, one person is asking, "What about the resources? Does your what? How much resources does your product use while installed?" In fact, very little. Uh, you know, I, I won't say zero because we do use some, but we're you we're we most do most of our processing in the background. In fact, is we have a patented technology called. Invisitasking, and what that is is besides running at lowest thread and process priority, which means all the other processes have uh, priority over us, we also look at before we run what resources are being used, what CPU, what uh, IOs, and if it's if it's over a certain limit, then we will just go to sleep and then come back again. Uh, Dan, Dan, I just got one question from Michael, and he says, they move VMs around the host based on load, which makes it senseless to use a host license unless you buy licenses for all hosts. Am I correct? Well, GQ, um, yes and no. Again, remember we talked about the optimization that occurs per go ahead i'm sorry he was talking uh he just wanted to make correction v ranger which uh moves all the vms around the host based on load sure so again we sit in the we sit in the in the os and the vm and so we'll move with that we're not really um how do i say it you know licensed police that we're going to you know really we're not going to follow all of that, quite frankly. And the only downside to, to the movement, if you're not, again, on all the VMs in your environment, is, is, again, that noisy neighbor effect that could potentially, you know, impede the, the total benefit you get or the, the full optimization, because if many of the VMs on that host are not optimized, they're creating all that small, tiny, random, noisy I.O. that degrades performance, and so the one VM or a couple of VMs on that host that might be fully optimized that will take away from some of that optimization. Isn't that fair to say? I, I think so, uh, Dan. But I, you know, I'm from I'm the tech guy, and Michael, I think uh, depending on y your situation, it may be better just to buy licenses for those VMs. It will vary, but uh, it may be better in your case to do that. You're correct. Okay. Uh, Dan, let me check here. I think that's it for now. Awesome. Well, great questions. Great, uh, great participation, folks. We really appreciate it. You know, so again, um, you're going to be getting here, you know, an NFR uh, uh, copy of the license. We're happy to work with you with that. We're happy to work across your environment, however you'd like. We're here to help because your success is our success, and we look forward to, to having you join uh, the multitude of successful customer stories that we've got, as you shared a few of those with you before. GQ, again, thank you for taking the time, and, and thanks for, for all of your insight into our technology and for all that you do to deliver that technology to our customers. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. And, you know, uh, I, I really enjoy interfacing with the customers and doing the Q&A. But I, you know, just from the tech side, yeah, if they just install this product, I, I love seeing these success stories from the customers. That's what drives me. So thanks, Dan. Yep, and now with your no reboot situation, it is so easy, GQ. It is so easy for someone. And, and folks, again, we're just a service. You can turn us off for whatever reason, and you can uninstall us without a reboot. So. 
you know, it, it, GQ and his team have made it so easy to see the benefits of the software. Look forward to working with everybody. Thanks for joining today, and hopefully we'll speak with you soon. Take care.